Good morning, everybody. Thank you guys so much for joining us. We are your consultation connoisseurs this morning. It is myself, Colin Cruz, Artistic Director of Color for John Paul Mitchell Systems. We have the brilliant Paula Peralta and Robert Cromings. Welcome, everybody. Hello, everyone. Thank you so much for being here. Good afternoon, good evening, wherever it is you are in the world. Thanks for being here. And I would like to celebrate Amy, Karen, and Nicole. Thank you for being here and being on camera so we can see your beautiful faces. You guys, it's not a requirement. There are no prereqs for this class, but if you want to jump on camera, we would love to see your beautiful faces wherever you are. This is a judgment-free zone, so wherever you're at, even if you're just relaxing somewhere special. <laughs> We'd love to see you. And I am also joined by this handsome man. He's on my right. I don't know where he's at for you. Robert Cromings. Hello, sir. Hello, hello. I'm just getting over my worst holiday of the year, Halloween. Everybody thinks I'm dressed up for Halloween all the time. <laughs> so when Mary and I are traveling, they were like, oh, I love your costume. Or I hope you win, they say. I hope you win. <laughs> so I'm glad that's over with. Uh, but, you know, this is an exciting class. We've obviously been rehearsing on this. I think there's some great content. One suggestion I'd make for all of you guys is such rich content. Take photographs. Click, click, click. Uh, grab it when you can, because this is what I do. I'm a squirrel. I'm gathering information, whether it's hair, quotes, ideas, and putting it in that little computer called my iPhone. So as we're going through this robust performance today, mm -hmm. grab as much capture as you can as you go through and listen to the team. So without much hesitation, Colin... Let's take it away. Yeah, so welcome. Let's go in first. I like to start at the beginning. Uh, for me, that is, what is the definition of a consultation? Well, the consultation, the definition from Weber's is, it's the action or process of formally consulting or discussing and meeting with an expert professional such as a hairdresser in order to seek advice. So let's start right there. That is what we were doing. For me, as a business owner, as a colorist, as a hairstylist, there's two really important parts of a consultation, two really main objectives that we're trying to do with a consult. The first is to understand what your guest expectations are. Now, I am using that word purposely, expectations. Every single client that sits in our chair is going to have an expectation of how this service is going to work. So we'll go to the next slide, Joe, if we can. Uh, how do we do that? Well, we have to figure out what does our guests want. They have a picture in their head. When you guys think about what we're actually doing, we are trying to take a picture out of someone's head. They visualize themselves finished already when they sit in our chair. And we have to take that picture out of their head through proper communication and put it on their head, um, which is not that easy to do, but that is really the goal. So we have to understand what those expectations are. We also have to have, have to do our best to understand uh, how to achieve those expectations. So it's a two-part system. Number one, what does our guest want? Number two, how are we best going to achieve that result? Uh, what is our game plan? That is essentially what we're doing, right? We do this to avoid the F word, right? We'll go to the next slide now. I don't know what you're thinking about the F word, but the F word for me is quite simple. It is frustration. I really kind of look at worst case scenario for me, uh, one of the things I really understood as a young hairdresser is the word frustration. Well, what is frustration? It is an expectation unmet, right? So I do a proper consult because I don't want to be frustrated as an artist. I don't want to be saying shoulda, coulda, woulda, wish I would have done this. And I also don't want my guests to be frustrated thinking this is what I wanted, but this is what happened. It's not exactly what I asked for. So a really proper consultation can avoid an expectation unmet. Let me give you an example of an expectation unmet. Um, movies are the best. Best example of this. You watch an amazing trailer for a movie. You have this excitement, enthusiasm to go see the movie. You watch the movie and it's kind of like, eh, blah. The trailer really put a really high expectation level for this movie. We're envisioning the best movie ever. All of a sudden you go and watch the full two hour version. It wasn't as good as the trailer. You're a little bit uh, frustrated, right? It can also happen when you read a book and you go see a book compared to the movie. Yeah, I'm frustrated. It happens all over in life. A friend gives you an amazing recommendation for the best restaurant they ever ate in their entire life. And you go and you're like, ah, it was okay. It wasn't the best. Frustrations are really uh, something that we want to avoid as hairdressers. And the only way to alleviate or get rid of frustration is to do a proper consult or to communicate. Communication really is the only way to alleviate frustration. So how do we communicate? Well, we communicate verbally. These are the things that we say. We communicate visually. 
These are the things that we observe and we communicate emotionally. These are your gut feelings. These are your vibes, uh, which are really important to hairdressers because we know it's probably the only job in the world that you spend two to three hours with a perfect stranger and you find <laughs> common ground and you really kind of start to connect. We really are amazing communicators. And I think that's what works in our favor. If we really look at a consultation as communication, um, we can really be a lot more successful. So how do we communicate verbally? What are we saying? Um, what are we seeing? What are our guests showing us? Um, and then, of course, those vibes, those feelings. Is the guest open to this? Is the guest not open to this? Um, you know, these are all things that, these are all social cues that we can pick up on to really be an effective communicator. Um, here's something I believe, and I believe this wholeheartedly. We'll go to the next slide. 90% of my redos personally as a hairdresser aren't because I did something bad as far as a bad cut or a bad color or made a mistake. All of my redos, with the exception of a very small percentage, are really redone because of improper consultation. I'm gonna give you guys an example. Guest comes in, they show you this lovely picture, this beautiful, amazing balayage, right? They say, hey, can you do this? We say, yeah, for sure, we can do it. We're in the people pleasing business, we got you, right? This is what tends to happen though. We start that process, we get the balayage on, we're excited, the guest says, hey, can I get out of here in about an hour and a half? I have to pick my kids up. Sure, we can do it. We rush the service. We are constantly saying yes, 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 we can do it, yes, yes, yes. And then what happens the next day, we were rushed with our service, we did a pretty good job. We got the picture close, but not exactly to it. We feel good about it in the time we did it in. The guest picks up the phone, they call, and they say, hey, it's not just like the picture. What I've learned is I do that complimentary the next day. I fix it. It looks great. Sometimes the things I'm learning, especially with balayage and color, you have to be a really good at properly communicating up front. Sometimes these visits take two, three, four visits. We undersold them. We overpromised, underdelivered. We end up doing a redo that really was just a poor improper consultation where if I told my guest up front, this is going to be a three or four visit balayage. We'll get you there. We can do all those visits in one day if you'd like. We, of course, would have to charge you for each, or we can start today, get you to about here, which is the process, wait a couple of weeks, brighten you up with each visit. What would you like to do? Nine out of 10 guests say, hey, let's see where we can get today, and then I'll come back in. Again, it's all about alleviating the frustration through proper communication up front, allowing our guests to know that this is the process, this is what it takes. The one thing we all take for granted as hairdressers, and I don't know if you guys agree, Paul or Robert, I'm sure you do, is we take for granted how talented we are. We believe that every single client knows what we know and they don't. That's what makes us professional. So in a proper consult, you want to start up front and you want to make sure that you're walking the guest through the whole entire process so they don't have an unmet, unmet expectation. And that includes time. I don't know if you guys, Robert, Paul, have any tips on this one as well. How do you guys avoid some frustrations when you're working with your guests to make sure that you're delivering uh, on these per perfect consults. Well, you know me, me sorry, Paul, oh. the word monger, the first word I just want to adjust a little bit. It's an adjustment. It's not a redo uh, because the psychology of a redo is terrible, but it is an adjustment, whether it's human error, whether it was consultative, I mean, whatever that is, I think it's really a big point to it, Colin. Um, you know, it is happening, but I think we can alleviate it by doing a better job. One of my favorite phrases, all roads lead to Rome. These are all the indicators you can touch in the beginning of an episode. And I think it's just really critical that we kind of get better at it as an industry. Um, you know, it's something I strive for in our new business model, um, taking it right back to the beginning. But I'm just saying, if you do these habits, no matter where you live, you're going to succeed. And the one thing I think you're going to love about me, Paul and Colin is our slight diversity. Yeah, we've been around us, but remember what we do for a day job, Colin, we consult with 500 models a show and you gotta be good at it and really deliberate because you don't wanna pick a girl, get her backstage. And she goes, I don't wanna be platinum. You wanna be very clear. So we get an, an additional experience that most people don't get to receive just by working through massive model calls uh, and getting to the point of what they're really into. So anyway, Paula, I didn't mean to cut you off, darling. No, it's great. I think um, one of the things, and thanks Colin for asking us to jump in on this conversation. I love it. Um, one of the things is like, assume nothing. I learned that so early as a hairdresser is that 
we, like Colin mentioned, we are professionals and we know things like we can look at a photo and see highlights and lowlights and gold tones and cool tones and warm tones, but don't ever assume that your guest knows that from the jump. Like I often, when they show me a photo, I'm like, point to on the photo, the part of the hair that you love, like show me exactly because we're seeing JLo with her, like, you know, money piece and her low lights and the back, you know, all the things. And they're seeing like this one strand of hair. That's like a level nine and a perfect golden blonde. Right. So you, and that's what they want all over their head. So I never assume when I'm going into a consultation and I will talk more about this later, but it is imperative that you almost like check your expertise, but bring in that expertise to the consultation like Robert was talking about and just assume like you don't know anything and neither does your guest. So you're gonna start from ground, ground zero and build it together. Yeah, it's it's so true. And let's go into some more tips here. Some keys to a great consultation and, and this team, myself and uh, Paul and Robert, we've all been working on these. These are the tips and tricks that we do. Um, of course, you guys wanna make sure that you're doing proper visual and verbal communications. What are your guests' expectations? What are they expecting to happen today? Um, like Paula said, tap into those visual cues, have them bring pictures. It's amazing how many stylists, uh, you know, I could sit down and do a consultation just with words. I'll be able to make that connection. But the second the guest shows me a picture, it's a game changer. If I don't ask them, do you have a picture? They won't even break it out nine out of 10 times. The second you ask them though, of course they have five or six. And usually there are five or six completely different pictures to Paul's point. So what do you like about each one of these pictures is really, really important. Also your visual cues as an artist, body language, things like that, which we'll get into. Once you become an expert communicator, uh, make sure you guys are digging deeper, read a little, some body language books so you can see uh, how people are reacting to some of the ideas. Are they closed off? Are they opening up? Are they leaning forward? Are they leaning back? Um, these are all things we train our front desk too, because oftentimes, I can tell whether or not a guest is happy in a consult from 20, 30 feet across the room just by how their body language is without hearing a word. So pretty big. Also, we want to manage those guests' expectations. What is doable today? What is doable tomorrow? What is going to take some time? And explain the process. I say this, you always want to be alpha, but you really do. You want to be in control. The guests can pick up on cues. If you're not confident, they'll pick up on your body language and it just doesn't feel right. So own your craft, make sure you're a master in it, but communication is a really big part of our craft. Uh, we'll go to the next slide. Some important things I tell my team all the time and myself all the time, some results are gonna take more than one visit. Uh, set that up, whether that's a conditioning treatment, whether that's multiple coloring services, um, you really have to be very specific with the guests so they know up front. Uh, a mistake is only a mistake if no one's aware it's going to happen. Keep that in mind. Like oftentimes mistakes aren't mistakes. If you tell them up front, this is what's going to happen. Color correction, your hair is going to be orange. Just preparing you, not a mistake, right? So use your expertise up front versus using it on the back end when you're in a situation. Um, does my guest fabric support their desired end result? Paulo, you and I talk about this a lot. Like if a guest is showing me a picture of a really voluminous, huge head of hair that is just gorgeous and balayage and they have paper thin baby fine hair their hair color might look like the picture but they don't have the texture to support it so oftentimes my color consultations turn turn into uh extension consultations as well right paula mm -hmm. absolutely yeah and it's honestly i've heard this for years i think as a future professional i heard this but like saying yes to the guest and no to the service is an important part of the consultation. <laughs> so like being clear, you are the expert and that the minute that guest walks through the doors of your salon, they're acknowledging that. They're acknowledging that you know something they don't know. And so be willing to be that dominant energy in the conversation, like Colin mentioned, because that is what's, you're, you're the captain of the ship, right? Like they're just there, it's a party barge as far as they're concerned, right? And they're just there to have a good time and walk away with some beautiful hair. But you're the one that knows all of those danger points on the journey from, you know, that level one hair to that level 10 that they're bringing in as an inspiration photo. Yep, right on. All right, so let's jump into the next questions. Ask questions, be specific. Um, Paula said it earlier, what about this picture do you like? Sometimes it's literally low lights and they're, they're coming in talking about blonde or it's the fringe and they don't like the rest of the haircut. You really want to start to ask up front, spend more time in the consultation. Believe me, uh, one of my favorite quotes, something I live by uh, is an ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure, meaning that putting the time up front, you don't need that cure in the back end. So 
be upfront and ask specific questions. How much time do you have today? That's something I learned from Kelly Cardenas years ago. Doesn't change. Um, do you have enough time today? Um, what is your budget? What are you at? You know, these are uncomfortable questions, but it's not as uncomfortable as dropping off a huge ticket and then having someone kind of feel terrible and not be able to pay it. So ask up front. We can always work within people's budgets. I think that's really important, whether that's time, expectations, so on and so forth. Here's a couple of quick remembers I put up here. I'm going to kind of power through these. Everyone sees color differently. We all have different cones in our eyes. So you have to train your eye to your guess eye, not vice versa, okay? That's, you know, we are not artists in that sense. Our canvas speaks back. It has students sometimes, it has husbands, it has all these people commenting on it, it has feelings and emotions. So make sure you're seeing the color that you're, the way your guest sees it, okay? Everybody's inch is different, all right? That's something to remember. Like some people, that's an inch. Some people, that's an inch. Be specific. Caramel isn't a color. It's an emotion. I hate that one. People come in. I want to be caramel. I'm like, okay, what the hell does that mean? Show me, show me, show me. Um, connect with your guests, how they communicate best. I think that's important. Start to figure out if they're on Instagram, if they're on TikTok, like have them show you connect with ways that they connect, which Robert's going to talk about a little bit. Pay attention to body language. Of course, you can Google that really quickly. Get some body language cues to help you guys again. Remember, we don't have to do everyone's hair. Uh, that's really important to me. If you're not vibing and you're not gelling, if that hairdresser sat in 20 chairs, I mean, that client sat in there and they have nothing good to say about anybody, you're probably not going to be the one person that fixes that problem. Watch out for red flags, you know, and last but not least, remember, we are not in the business of being right or wrong. We are in the business of making people happy. So none of this is personal if a guest doesn't like their hair, so on and so forth. Work with your guests. I start every consultation that way up top. Um, just want to let you know, I'm here to work with you. If you don't like your hair, anything about it, just let me know. The more I can understand how you see color, the more I'm going to be the person that makes you happy with your hair color. So be upfront like that, especially with new guests. Next slide. And we'll go quickly through this one. Remember, the consultation isn't just about you feeling good about your guest's hair. A lot of time, that's what we think. My, my job is I got to get what the client wants, and then I got to come up with a plan. That's not all of it. Yes, that's true. But the other half of it is actually more important. It's also about your guests feeling good about you being their hairdresser, feeling good that you have a plan. It starts up front with proper communication that puts everyone at ease and it allows you to really be successful and work your way through. Trust is really important. I know you're going to bring that up, Paula, mm -hmm. as we move forward. So the next slide we have right here, and I want to bring the group in for this one, um, com communicate visually. Um, you know, if a guest sits down and says, I want highlights, well, what version of this is they're all highlights. You know, that's where I say we're not in the business of being right or wrong. We got to make you happy. So we got to dig deeper. How do you guys leverage pictures and tools, Robert and Paula, to be successful with your consultations? One of the things for me with the with creating photos is <clears throat> this was actually a huge motivator for me on social media to start um, taking photos of my own work and posting them on social. And the reason for that is because I would have guests bring in photos that, um, I don't know, they got it off of Pinterest, it's a wig, it's um, photoshopped. I have no idea what that guest fabric was going into the service. And so for me, um, I really started to take more photos, post more photos of my work. And then eventually what started to happen is my guests were bringing my photos into me and saying, I really like this person's hair. And I knew exactly what that hair generally looked like. So I could tell them like, okay, here's what that canvas, you know, looked like in the beginning, or here's how many visits it took to achieve that result. So for me, that's where photos, we're visual people, we're creators. And so that picture is always really like it's worth a thousand words right so um for me that was really huge and and i will say for those of you that aren't currently taking photos of your work i would strongly suggest even if you don't have to be you know a professional photographer in order to create something that can be utilized as a tool to clarify communication with your guests um but that's where like all the whole purpose of the consultation i'll talk about this in a minute but the whole purpose of the consultation is to create ease in the service, both for you and for your guest. So I, yeah, I love photos. I'm a huge fan of them. And I'm like, please always, if, if ever there's a lack of clarity, like let's dig into the photos again and always reference them for sure. 
Yeah, everybody used to deny it. People used to, when I was a young hairdresser, Polly, they'd bring in pictures of Lady Diana. Yeah. <laughs> and it'd be all so crumpled because it had been in their wallet for like years. Uh, but let me tell you a story I think is really appropriate here. Many, many years ago when I was working for Jean Bra, the former artistic uh, leader of Paul Mitchell, uh, I worked at a salon called Chauffe Rouge and a young lady came in. She was Japanese and didn't speak English. And she showed me a photo and it was a short little sort of pixie lixy and sort of platinum. So I was like, wow, this is kind of fun. So she spoke zero English whatsoever. I spent hours taking her Asian hair to a beautiful something I could maybe tone. And then I cut the bejeez out of her hair. And then her friend came to pick her up who did speak English and said, she only wanted the haircut. <laughs> <laughs> so I gave her a free color. <laughs> <laughs> There so you go. I'm just saying when we're doing shows and we're abroad, I don't speak Italian, but I show the girls pictures. Yesterday I was working on some models with Mary. I had that little sequence because I've done her hair before and showed her some of the things I think we could move into. So I think it's something we got to rely on. And I think you said something beautiful about your own work, but let me just say, let's assume you don't have your own work. It's fine to pillage and take uh, Pirate Jack gives you permission because if I want to create a menu board of what I want to talk about, so the wolf hair cut, the shag, the pixie lixie, get a little 10 squares of those so that you've got something to show. As you get better and you shoot and capture, replace those ones. That's how we work with a storyboard. So I think that the, if you have access and you're shooting great work, great. But if you don't, research my friends, find it on the internet and find the sort of story they think is relevant to the client right now. And as I say, pictures are so easy we're taking them of our salad we're taking them of our cocktail you know let's really understand what we've got here we've got a powerful tool in our hands and by giving them the my favorite restaurant paula danny's because it's got the picture of the grand slam <laughs> i want that give me that that's how people order at mcdonald's they understand the picture they see it and i'm just saying we've got to use more than just dialogue use these visual tools and that's really what they are at the end of the day and I promise you, you will succeed. Because one thing that the team's talking about, which I think is wonderful, the retention level of our clientele is affected by this column. So the reality of when we see low return rates, it often comes from the third visit, lack of consultation. We start to take it for granted. So one thing I want to say, it's not doing it one time, it's doing it every time. And whether a brand new client never been there before, or you've been doing our hair for 35 years, this is the reality of elevating it to go into that connoisseur level. And if you do that, uh, I promise you, your game will change. You'll see much more success coming. And the biggest number that you really want to work on is your retention. Because if you're retaining every single client, then you don't have to build so heavy. And this is the biggest thing that the industry suffers for. After three visits, the dropout rate is like six, seven, eight out of 10 are dropping off because you're not consistent with the consultation. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Very cool. So let's get into the last bits of these slides here. And we have so much stuff to present to you guys today. We want to keep moving forward with this. Uh, another big piece of advice is to leverage technology. Um, you know, let's all look at this. I mean, through this modern day COVID era, obviously we've all kind of fast forwarded. We are leveraging technology, communicate how your guest communicates, FaceTime consultations, things like that, that we're going to dig into a little bit deeper through here, but it is really important to leverage technology. And remember that it's not always about you. Uh, we have an amazing new tool, which we're gonna share with you guys today called Hair AI. Um, I listen, I launched Hair AI in my salon and the first thing some of my hairdressers said was, hey, listen, I already know how to do all this. I know what products I'm gonna recommend. I don't need to hook up my, uh, put a, put a, you know, uh, an app or use an app to, to recommend products. I've been doing this for years. And I say, listen, I trust you. I know that's true. But what I'm going to tell you right now is when you leverage technology, when you're doing something that the salon around the corner isn't doing, you're adding value. That tool is for the guest. 110%, you're leveraging that guest experience and you're showing them what split ends look like. I cannot tell you how many haircuts we've sold by showing the guest under that microscope what those ends look like, why they need to be cut, how they're going to split up. So it's using those tools. The analogy I can give you guys is something I talked to my own team about when you go to the doctor, if the doctor says, you know, she says you have a broken arm, you're going to believe her, right? That's just it. They're doctors. But when that doctor shows you the x-ray, shows you where it's broken, you trust them and you understand uh, where that break is. And it's so important to leverage technology. Let's roll the hair AI video 
and uh, get in there. And it's about building that trust, which is something that Paul is going to bring up and talk about a lot in the next segment as well. I love that video. And every time I see it, I'm like more like, yes, Harry, I <laughs> like, it is definitely the thing that creates so much ease in the service. And I love so much of what Colin talks about with um, regard to like the why of the consultation and creating clarity, right? Our jobs are stressful. They're hard on our bodies. We're working long hours. We're shampooing, we're foiling, we're formulating color. We're doing all of these things, right? So, so far we've talked about consultations in creating ease, reducing stress, increasing the communication. I want to talk a little bit about how to take that to the next level. And then also how this makes you money. Cause that's really, we're in, it's a business, right? We're in the business of hair. And ultimately I'd rather not spend a a huge amount of time on something that's not going to generate revenue for me in the salon. And so as we shift into more about talking about consultations, the first thing I'll talk about is what does a consultation do? So we talked about how to do it, but why? A thorough consultation builds trust, just like Colin said, asking questions, looking at the photos, leveraging technology, it builds trust. That trust, and I love the analogy of like the bone broken, the doctor saying it's broken, cool, I believe you, but then showing you that it's broken, that creates trust. And once you have that trust, you actually can create a relaxed service experience. And that for me, like, you know, I've been doing this longer than some and not as long as most, but I've been, you know, in my 10, 12 years as a hairdresser, that's the thing for me is the stress is not worth it. Like I, I do not want to be stressed when I am working. I want to have fun and I want to enjoy my guests. And so creating a relaxed service experience for me has been really, really key. And so I'm going to share with you three ways to connect during the consultation. And I'm going to roll a little video of um, some behind the scenes, or I'm not going to roll Joey, thank you, <laughs> is uh, going to roll a video of what a guest service experience looks like from start to finish. And I'm going to talk to you guys about each of these um, three keys as that video is rolling. Um, so we can pop up that video. Cool. So the first thing is I always build in about 15 to 20 minutes for a guest consultation. And I'll tell you why more about that in just a minute. You'll notice in the beginning that I'm utilizing um, a stool. I'm sitting in front of my guest during that consultation. And what that does is it allows me to connect and sit with that guest and I see them and they see me and I'm blocking the mirror so they're not judging themselves. <laughs> they don't have time to look at their bags or their wrinkles or their gray hair that they're stressing about. I can just sit with them and connect and get that information. And then what you'll notice as we continue through here, everyone's just having a great time, right? Big smiles, but it's just easy because we know in the consultation what the, what the guest desires. My guest is comfortable with what that process is going to be. And then we can relax, we can chat, we can talk about future services, we can talk about um, future visits and what take home is required, what sort of upgrades are available. So it just in general, like I said, is a relaxed experience. So they have beautiful hair, but they have a really beautiful time with me. So 
I, like I said, I build in 15 to 20 minutes for my consultation. The next thing I do, I mentioned sitting in front of the guests. The other thing that I do is I keep asking questions until I am 100% clear and my guest is 100% comfortable. So those, we all know it. And I know we, as hairdressers, we've all been there where you're just like, oh, I don't know, but you like move forward with the service anyway. And you just like keep going, whether it's, you're not clear on the formula or you don't know if their hair is going to break off when you try to, you know, highlight them because because you don't have their 12 years of, of previous color experience. Anytime you have that like little thing in the back of your mind, stop, keep asking questions. And if you're still not clear, do a test strand. Like that's also part of a consultation that is so, so important is really taking time to actually see what's on the hair and set yourself up to win either for that day, the service or for future services. Let's talk a little bit more about how can consultations make you money. So again, I talked about that 15 minutes at the beginning of the service. As a young hairdresser, I did not understand the value of hair of um, consultations. And I was like, really, like, why would I waste 15 to 20 minutes? It's already taking me two hours to do a haircut and a blow dry. Like, I don't have an extra 15 or 20 minutes. What I realize now as a more experienced hairdresser is that 15 to 20 minutes that I spend with my guests sitting in front of them, connecting with them, getting them comfortable, getting the information that I require actually saves me hours and hours of time in the long run. So my service goes faster. Everyone's more comfortable. We're more relaxed. There's that level of trust. And also like Colin said, 90% of redos happen because of a lack of communication. So I would rather take 15 to 20 minutes at the beginning of the service and then not have to spend three or four hours a week later when, you know, whoever, Sally, I don't want to say Karen, like when Sally's not happy with her, her service, you know, and she's having to come back and I'm not having to spend an extra service appointment getting her hair where she wants it to be. So that's the thing that I will say for those of you that are leading teams and they don't see the value of consultation. That is like, for me was the sticking point. If you do the consultation now, it will save you so much time in the long run and stress, which some people don't value that, but I don't wanna be stressed at work. Um, okay, so let's talk about how consultations can make you money. So you've established that trust, your guest is relaxed, and let's talk about treatments, toners, as well as take home in your service. When you look at treat treatments, once you have that consultation with your guest and they're saying, hey, my hair's super dry, or I'd really like to grow it out, but I feel like it's brittle and breaking off, or I'd really like to go blonde, but I'm worried about maintaining the integrity of the hair. That's a great opportunity to walk into that door your guest is just open and say, hey, Audra, because you mentioned that you're afraid about, you know, you're worried about maintaining the strength and the, the moisture in your hair, here is a wonderful treatment that we can do in the salon today to help maximize the integrity of your hair. So I'm just, I put some numbers together because I like to crunch the numbers. It's fun for me. And that's part of what motivates me as a hairdresser. So for example, if you have an $85 service and you upgrade that guest to a $25 treatment, that's a 45% increase. Then it then goes up to a hundred, sorry, that's not right. It's $110. So when you look at even just that small upgrade, you're increasing your guest services. When you look at, they've done that treatment. So you upgrade them to the treatment. <clears throat> they love it. And they want to talk about maintaining the results of that wonderful treatment that's where take home starts to come into play. So you now have the opportunity, and I'll talk more about take, take home in just a minute, but you have that $85 service, a $65, that's you know $40 for shampoo and conditioner. On top of that $25 treatment, you're getting now going from an $85 service to a $150 service. So that's where you're looking at an, a 75% increase with minimal amount of time. So you add on maybe 10, 15 minutes to your service, and you've almost doubled your money in the salon. And that for me, like the numbers don't lie. And that is the value of a consultation is it actually starts to make you money. When we go into the next one, so this is where I talk about toners as a standalone service. So one of the biggest challenges, and I love Robert that you brought up that conversation about, um, about a guest not returning, right? After a certain amount of time, because we're not connecting with them. Well, the thing about this is frequency of visit is one of the easiest ways to mitigate that and to keep that guest in the salon regularly. So say your guest comes in, they get some beautiful highlights and sometimes they don't wanna come in and highlight again for another three, four, six months, some cases, 12 months, right? But one of the ways to navigate that is to invite them in for a toner as a standalone treatment. So again, I don't know what your numbers are. 
I'm just putting this out here as like an average. If you say that your toner service is an $85 service, so you know, you may call it a gloss, a shines, whatever that is. If it's an $85 service and you have that guest coming in two times a year, that's an additional $160 per guest that you're generating as revenue. They're coming in four times a year. That's $340. Eight times a year is $680. So this is a really great way. <clears throat> These numbers grow really quickly. So this is just one guest. Like if you have 10 guests that come in like this, that's an additional, you know, $3,000 a month that you have an opportunity to generate simply by offering that guest to come in again. And Barb, I love that. I see that you said you offer to come in about three to four weeks. Yes. A tone and a style. Absolutely. So that guest is coming back in, it's building loyalty, it's maintaining the longevity of their color, it's helping them to look great. They're your walking, talking billboard. So why not get them in more often and keep their hair looking brilliant? One of the conversations that I talk to my guests, I say to my guests a lot is you're protecting your investment. You've invested all this money into a lightning service, which is not cheap. And now you have an opportunity to protect that investment. So what's $85 on top of a, you know, three, $400 service, maybe more depending on what your pricing looks like. And then the next one is take home. Now this is a conversation that is definitely like a touchy subject for hairdressers. People like hate take home. Some people love it. I will tell you as a young hairdresser, I did not understand the value of take home until I actually had my own space and I was a salon owner and I could see the value that was coming through. Even now as an independent stylist, I have my own private studio. Take home is one of like the biggest revenue generators for me in the salon because it's such an easy way to create more without having to do any extra work and it starts in the consultation. So again, making those recommendations, developing that sense of trust, understanding what your guests challenges are, what problems they have, what fears they have about their hair, and then you're providing solutions via take home. So again, if you have an $85 service and you sell one shampoo, that's $20. It's a 20% increase. You're going up to $105. If you have a shampoo and a conditioner for the guests, and again, this is like a middle of the road cost. So it's a, if it's $40, you've got a 45% increase and your ticket automatically goes up to $125. That's in like zero minutes, right? It's simply in the like, you don't have to do an extra foil. There's no time at the, at the wash house that you're having to do extra massages or treatments or toners. It's literally just saying, here's what we talked about and what I recommended in your consultation based on the services we provided today. Here's what I'd recommend for you. One of my favorite conver conversations I've ever had with Colin was talking about um, how I often can have like a ticket that's like, you know, $200, $300 in take home. And he was like, well, how? I sell a lot of tools in the salon. And that for me has been one of my biggest revenue generators. If you have an $85 service and, you know, your average, you know, blow dryer, pro, pro tool, whatever it looks like is $105, that's a 125% increase in revenue immediately. Immediately, you sell that tool, you get their guests excited about that wave that you've created. We just launched the new wave press, which is incredible. Um, you know, my guests are loving it and then they want their mermaid waves forever. So they purchase the tool like that's immediately you go from $85 to $190. And all of this is in the consultation. I ask my guests at the beginning of the service, how will we be styling you today? And they'll say, oh, I want it smooth or, oh, I want waves or, oh, I want it diffused. So all of that is giving me cues about what sort of products I need in order to achieve that. Do I need a treatment beforehand in order to maximize the result? What sort of tools am I going to be using? Do I need a round brush? Do I need a paddle brush? Do I talk to my guests about that? Do they have one at home? Right? So it's all about helping them and empowering them to duplicate the same looks that as I create for them in the salon, they feel amazing. They've got a pep in their step and let me show you how to recreate that and that ends up being my take-home ticket, which generates so much revenue all the time. And I cannot restate enough how much, how important it is for take-home. So um, I'd love for you guys to pop in the chat. How many of you guys on average, like about how much, do you know what your take-home numbers are? Like how many of you, how many guests? So if you have 10 guests in a day, on average, how many of your guests are purchasing take-home? I saw, I saw Amy mouth to me, one to two. I love it. Thanks, Amy. 
<laughs> that was great. Yeah. So one to two, and that's amazing. And what would it mean for you in your business? And Amy, I'm just going to be, thank you for playing. And I saw your face, but like, what would it mean for you in your business? If you were able to double that, right? So if you've got $20, $40 of take home per guest, you doubled that into like $40, $80, times that by four weeks in a year, that's a hundred or four, four weeks in a month, that's $120 a month times 12, right? You're making an extra thousand dollars per guest every single year. So it's it, those numbers quick come so quickly. And it's a really, really great way um, to connect with your guests and really, truly like it's the, it's the cherry on top of your, your service experience. So with that said, um, I, speaking of elevating a service experience, this is one of the people that I've learned the most about salon business from all the way back from, I remember he had CDs, seriously, the, the CD collection, I listened to it all the time. Um, and it taught me a lot about business in the salon. Robert Cromines, so I'm sure you're brilliant with us. Hey, 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 I'm back, I'm back, I'm back. So just because, first of all, Colin and Paula, you guys did so good. We got a lot of content and because it's being recorded, uh, I'm gonna, pop my PowerPoint on. I want you guys to photograph it as we go along because I want to talk off script a little bit. So if you don't mind, production team. So elevate the experience. I'll give you 10 seconds. I do believe it's a salon experience. One, two, three, four, five, six. And next slide. This is called death by PowerPoint. My okay. favorite question to ask. And again, you've got to come up with your own questions. We're working with the young stars. I've been in salons where somebody said, what you haven't done? <laughs> what type of sexiness is that? Uh, a young lady who's just started working with us, she said, uh, what brought you in today? Now, I wouldn't say that's a bad one, but can't we do better? I'm just saying this is a challenge that you've really got as a team or as an individual to find dialogue. So here's some examples. Uh, I, the save the day is probably something you guys didn't hit on, Colin and Paula. When you see them again, it's that old song, Diana Ross, when will I see you again? I was in tune there almost. Uh, I put something on the chat room. I hope it came up. But instead of it being words and dates like we use in the salon, it was activities, Thanksgiving, New Year's, Christmas. So you kind of put a visual to it. And I love what Colin did. There it is right there with all the emojis and stuff. But just that's really the reality of how we see people. When's the best time to bring it up? Here's my biggest flaw, Colin. We leave it to the end. And when you leave it to the end, you forget about it. You can't squeeze it in, especially if you've got the wrong pace, if you're going too fast. So bring it up top is really the key message here. So I love that. We stole it from Instagram. Again, Pirate Jack Sparrow in action. Next slide. You guys are awesome. I can't believe you pulled that up. Upgrades, we talked about it. Paula, you hit it beautifully. Treatment, take home, all roads lead to Rome. And I'm just saying people deny this. And I just think it's something that we have to pay attention to. And, you know, the, the reality of this and what we sort of bring into it is really up to the individual. But leading to upgrades, these are all possibilities. If you're not overbooked, you have an opportunity to upgrade that experience. And the thing that we've talked about, where it's hair AI or your words or the pictures, you're trying to create authority. And when you have authority, people are going to buy it. Nobody's buying a tool from Paula if they don't believe in her. It's like, it's a total belief system. A $300 retail store is I love and believe in you. And that's the end of story. Just drop the mic right there or the hot iron, whatever you're into, Paula. Next slide. <laughs> Next slide. I'm quick today. You guys did so good. Digital consultation. Colin taught me this. We have people in our team doing it that are succeeding and other people that deny me. Deny me. Why do people deny me? And I just say, and this is something that is just as clear as the nose on your face that if you do these in the comfort of somebody's living room, they can get to know you. When the client comes in for the first visit, you already know them. This is a game changer. I listen to my wife do them in the living room and she is masterful right down to getting the credit card at the end of it. I mean, it is a business and it gives a person 27, you know, four, what is it, 24 seven access to you. You can do them in, off your Instagram page. Uh, this is a sleeper. Next one. I think that may be me. Uh, these were some of the things that were really important. I think for Mary, a quiet place. So you really have their attention, good light. So you can see what you're doing. We sometimes do model calls over the internet and people can't even get their head in frame. So I'm just saying, you got to be able to see it. And a lot of consultations should be really 80% of them and 20% of you. I want you guys to remember that. Remember, I'm a big mouth, but the reality is the more they tell me, the more information I get, the more reality I know what I'm doing because I've got a bit of experience. 
So, you know, come up with the right questionnaire when you're doing this. There's nothing wrong with scripting. I script out a lot of things. We scripted this performance today. We worked and rehearsed it. This gives you control. It makes you sound really incredible. Like you really know what you're talking about. Trying it on the first time is a little difficult, but you've got to get good at this. So write yourself a script from what you've learned from Colin, Paul and me. Put it into your words. What would you say? How would you say it? What would your client want to hear it from? You know, in which words you select. It's kind of like a jukebox. What do you want to hear today? Next slide. So a lot about, um, you know, our changes in the industry. We've been through such massive change. So I created a brand new brand. And the reason I want to bring this up, Colin, sometimes to rip it up and start over. Now, if you're killing it with consultation, your numbers are through the roof, you can delete the whole episode. But if you're like a lot of people that I know, the reality is, what are you going to do to change the system? So it's starting again, in my mind, with a brand new brand. And I thought, what was the most important part? It was the elevated consultation. So everybody in the salon will be using hair eye. It's not a choice. Like, do you want to? I'm looking at Amazon, who just created the first digital experience salon. And I'm just saying, this is not... It's not your age, it's the age we're in. And whether you understand the value of my clients are going to Starbucks, they're buying off all these things. They're very used to technology. And especially after the close downs, they're even more used to it. So I'm just saying it should be that elevated consultation. In comes hair AI. I've just doubled my value. It's like a second opinion. So suddenly we're talking about what's most important to the client's experience is hair. Not talking about whether you believe in you know, masking or the government, I'm just saying we are here to talk about hair. Let's keep it focused on hair. And I'm just saying this is a great way to really bring that authority. And if you're a first time kid just starting out, if you use this every time, you'll use it all the time and you'll always have that sense of difference because nobody else is pulling out shit. No Harry Potter wand in any other salon. What we've <laughs> always learned is how to be unique and different. That's what color bar was, wash houses. It's how do we stand out? And it's how do we stand out in our dialogue and our words that I think you guys put into play really well. Um, you know, one thing I want to bring up too, your energy. Write this one down. It's so good, Paula, because you're going to use it and make a CD set of your own. The <laughs> currency of your energy is money. So if you go through this script, like your life doesn't depend on it, and you mutter the words without believing in it. So that means you got to practice it. I'm just saying, if you put some energy into the gusto, you will see it come back and dollar, dollar, dollar bills. <laughs> it's just as simple as that. So as I visualize this new world of a cutting room where we only focus on two things, treatment and haircuts, and the reality of those two things can really build a ticket. If you really think about being focused, there's a hamburger chain that Colin doesn't go to because he's vegan, but it's called In-N-Out Burger. And they only have four things on the menu. There's no seasonal, no pumpkin spice burger. There's none of that shit. It's just four simple ways you order. It's one, two, three, or four. So we kind of took that. We've got three elements in it. First is called Rising Star. The next one's called Superstar. And the next one's called Rock Star. And each one has a different price point, yeah? So when you kind of get into what they've got to learn, all I got to do is teach them how to elevate the consultation. I'll be using this video we just made today to take it further, to interpret it in your own little way, to make it individual to you. Like when actors in great movies ad lib a little bit and make the scene incredible. So visualizing that sitting down, eye to eye contact, eye to eye contact is such a critical thing. Uh, I wear glasses a lot, people can't see my eyes. I do it on purpose, but I lose contact. I lose contact that I used to have when I could see much different. When I didn't wear hats, I had a better connection with the audience. Now they don't know if I'm really in here. Uh, eye to eye, that really sitting down and listening and getting into it before you start pulling through their hair like you're looking for bugs. These are not psychologically the greatest thing here. Uh, Colin brought it up, mirror your clients. I can tell I had a client come in once and she, the smock was just not big enough for her, but somebody encouraged her when she went in, she must've thought she was at the medical room. She took all her clothes off and she came out with this teensy weensy smock and sat in my chair, which shrunk another two inches. And I looked over, I was working on another guest. And I just said, I just walked over to her. I said, come with me. And I walked her back into the dressing room. I said, you'll be fine to keep your clothes. And we'll just put this on top. Reading the body language is a skill set you've got to do. Like Colin said, he can tell if there's a good consultation. I can tell when a client doesn't like her hair. <laughs> we can all tell. She's like, you're blow drying hair. She goes, she hates me. She hates me. We can tell. We pick this up. I even, for me, Colin, I read body languages of audiences when they've been dragged there, when they don't want to be there, or they deny they're going to laugh at my stupid jokes. I'm going to get you. I'm not going to leave off until you give it to me. So anyway, back to this visualization of the cutting room. 
So if the consultation is done effectively, it leads to all the things that we talked about, every indicator you can imagine, reputation and uh, new requests, meaning people are going to come to you because when I go and sit with my friends, I go to the salon where they check me out with technology, they do all of this stuff, they show me pictures, they get me involved, I really feel that they give me what I want, suddenly that's the word of mouth. So you're actually building referrals. And I think that, so whatever I wanna see happen in this mystical world of consultation is possible just by getting clever, taking the time to write it down, taking the time to commit to rehearsing. And if you got a team, do that minute to spin it game, have them rehearse it. What are you gonna say, use it. The more you practice it, the better you'll be. And if you wanna practice on a great client, practice on a client who loves you. Give it a try on a client who's been coming to you since beauty school, Give it your best, give it your gusto, and you'll see that they'll love it. And then suddenly you've got the confidence. And remember, they don't know your script. You can mess up a little bit. I do it all the time. But the reality is the as you get to more of the, the bits that have to happen, you start to see the success, you'll start to build that 21-day habit. And I think that's a big, big part of it. Um, you know, what a consultation is beginning with the end in mind. So what is the ideal end in mind that she left with take home? She rebooked. She upgraded to a treatment. She called her husband. She loved it so much to tell him to come in a referral. And let's not talk about the sweet little honeypot gratuities. I mean, this is the perfect game. And what I've enjoyed about the changes our industry have made is we're not double, triple booking, which was one of the deterrents on rebooking numbers, on giving a great consult because we had one behind them. We had one coming in the door. So suddenly you're narrow. Let's slow it down, fewer clients, more meaning, a consultation with a purpose of what you're trying to achieve, and then score yourself out of the five things that are possible that I hit all five. And if you start to hit all five, you don't need 200 clients. You don't need 100. You could be very effective on 75 working clients. This is the game we play. Hairdressers, this is the world we got to live in, being artistic and enough to protect herself like Paula mentioned. When she was a young kid, she didn't realize that she should do these things. What if you're a young kid and you did do these things? You can have my big hat today. <laughs> it's your role here. And I'm just saying what I love about the jobs we three get to do is if I can get this into a young kid's mind or somebody who's beginning again or somebody who's open to changing their way of thinking, this will change your life forever. And I think this is a beautiful thing that we got to get together. And I promise you this particular episode um, you know, we capture it, we record it. This will be the training tool I use for my team, getting them involved with this new digital learning. Not everything has to come out of my mouth. And I don't have to say this again and again. I just play the tape again, play the tape again. Hey, guess what? Go back and watch the tape. <laughs> it's how you should train your dog. Sit, 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 just press play. Uh, this is the reality of repetition. And if you're going to do it to yourself, you've got to train yourself. Practice makes it come alive. And I'm just saying that's what makes it different. And that's where you become quite successful because most people are not taking the time for this. Most people are just taking it for granted by the third visit. It's like, go get your own smock on. If you could wash your own hair, that is not a memorable experience. Let's change the way we play the game because the world has given us permission to change. And that's what I love about what's going on right now. And we'll keep you posted on our new brand and just show you the success. I'm going to document it. I'm going to show you them using hair eye and show you all the different things that will convince you even further that this is the future of the hair industry. There's not a doubt in my mind that technology and touch, tech and touch are going to balance into the everyday world for where we go in the future. So that was awesome. I thought I was anyway. <laughs> now, very well said, Robert. And, and a lot of the comments are coming in on, on how much of an impact you've obviously had on everyone's career being a visionary. And it is about, you know, adopting to the next level. That's how you have to get to the next level. So the good thing that's exciting for me, it's not overcomplicated. It's essentially communication. I believe hairdressers are some of the best communicators out there. Uh, we really do have an ability to connect with people in real time. Uh, and find common ground with just about anyone. So if you're focusing on your basic communication skills, they can be digital as well. You're just reconnecting and confirming um, your talent. And to me, that's what's most exciting about a great consultation. A consultation really when well done, it's your opportunity to let your guests know how amazing of a hairdresser you are, how amazing of a stylist you are. You are anticipating, you're walking them through the process, you're connecting with them, you're training their, your eye to theirs, you're pulling out those expectations out of their head, putting it onto their head. But when you do it right, 
you really have the ability to show people what you're capable of, how much talent, how much education, how much opportunity really goes into every service. We work so hard. You guys are doing it right now. We spend a lot of our time to become experts and a great consultation really to me is the ability to share with your guests what an expert you are. And uh, doing that up front, that's just a no win. I mean, that's just a no losing situation. It's a win win for everyone uh, if you do it properly, right? Absolutely. And, and the thing that I would say about that, and thanks Colin for like bringing up the point about you're, you've now invested this hour with us to elevate your service experience in the salon and be willing to have that conversation with your guest. And you can walk away as simply as tomorrow, walking in with every single guest, build in that time for a consultation and say, Hey, you know, I just had this class on consultation. It was amazing and so fun and inspiring. <laughs> and now let me practice on you and be willing to engage with your guests and let them know that you spent time on continuing education. You took the time to develop the skill set and now you want to practice. Um, and again, like Robert said, use those guests that you're comfortable with, that know you, that you already know love you. And you know, if it's one guest tomorrow and then two guests the day after that and three guests the time after that and then four and then five and then every single guest every time, ultimately, that's how you start to see the marker move on your business and that's where you start to see more revenue. So as much as we all want to be perfect straight out of the gate, it's just not the reality, but you can start somewhere and you can start today. So the time is now to start making more money and having more fun than you've ever had before in the beauty industry. You're always having fun, Paula, always. Look at that smile. I'm going to give you a couple of writables again. Um, this is for you, Audra, uh, so you can mentor. Mentorship is believing in others till they believe in themselves. That's what training is. You guys understand that? And that can be applied to your own individual character. So that we maybe I'm your mentor, Colin, Paula, whoever it is. We believe in you. So till you get the confidence and then you realize that you had it all the time, it's just that belief system. And the other one I think really defines the industry right now. You know, the term used to be, be a go-getter. And now to me, it's about being a go-giver. The more you give of your time and the more time a client or guest spends in your salon, believe it or not, it then turns into like Paula brought up equals dollars. And if we look at what we have learned through this close down, it's really about the lifestyle that we may have been on, a treadmill of just activation, come out of school. It's like, you know, just one of those things you just do, do, do. By this pause, we're able to see things in a different way. And I think people have chosen working less and being more effective as a strategy moving forward. And I think that's good because I want you to run with scissors till your heart stops. Meaning if you're seeing so many clients that you're not loving what you're doing, then that's not a good end game. That's not a good end result. So we really believe in hairdressers. We love the diversity of the industry, whether you're freelance. One of the words I got from Cunity, Quinity, uh, solopreneur, uh, you know, whatever you're doing, if running a team employee based to me, Paul Mitchell loves you. We want you to do well. And I learned from all of these organizations, and I think it's a big part of what makes Colin and Paula such dynamic art directors. And I would just say, you guys blew me away today with your, your preparation to your PowerPoints. And you really, I could have just went to the bar. You guys had this, but uh, just a beautiful opportunity. And I love spending time with both of you all, whether it's virtual or in person. Uh, but I think you guys did an incredible, credible thing today. So thank you guys for everybody tuning in. <laughs>